Hello, and welcome to Quality of Life, the program where we look at different aspects that can contribute to one's quality of life. Today we're going to talk about the realm of home health and hospice and how it pertains to quality of life. Joining us today is Tanya Smith from St. Nicholas Hospital of Home Health and Hospice. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you. Um, your current role in that is your director of home health and hospice for St. Nicholas Hospital, correct? That's correct. Um, how long have you been doing that? I've been at St. Nicholas Hospital in the um, leadership role for this department for seven years now. Wow. What about your overall experience in this area? Um, I have been in the field of home health and hospice for 17 years uh, with uh, St. Nick's and other organizations over Excellent. the years. Excellent. Excellent. To be involved in a role like this, and especially your role as leader, director, what type of education do you have to go through or certifications? Well, I currently have a um, certification, a national certification in hospice and palliative care nursing, uh, but I also have a bachelor's in science in nursing, um, and I am currently working on a master's degree in organizational uh, quality and leadership um, from Marion University in Fond du Lac. Wow, that's a well-rounded education. Mm -hmm. What about the line staff as far as, you know, education? Uh, the, uh, the nursing staff uh, have a minimum uh, requirement of an associate degree in nursing. Uh, we do encourage nurses to uh, go on and finish their uh, bachelor's degree, um, and, and that, is, uh, that rounds them out nicely sure. to, to be able to care for um, the patient populations that we serve. Okay. Uh, speaking of that with the populations and the programs, what programs do you oversee currently? Uh, I currently oversee the home health uh, program hospice program, uh, we have a palliative care program, and we also have a lifeline program. Okay. Is that just for St. Nick or in the Sheboygan area, or is that for other areas? I know you have sister hospitals as well with St. Nick, like St. Vincent and St. Mary's in Green Bay. Do they have similar programs? We do. Uh, St. Vincent and St. Mary, uh, which are two sister hospitals in Green Bay, uh, do have a home health uh, program as mm -hmm. well. Um, and then they do partner with um, Unity Hospice in Green Bay um, to provide those end-of-life services. Okay. Do you have any involvement with those programs do, as well? I do. I oversee the, um, the home health uh, uh, program in Green Bay um, with St. Vincent and St. Mary's as well. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a huge scope. It is. For an area. Yes. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, moving along, um, home health. What, what would be the definition of a home health um, service that you provide? Okay. Um, home health services are offered to those people who are perhaps recovering from an illness. Uh, maybe they've been in the hospital and they come home and they need some help getting back to their normal state of functioning. Um, maybe they need wound care or maybe they're a new diabetic or they have a new diagnosis and they need some teaching with medications, um, with their diet. Um, so skilled nursing services um, or maybe they need some therapy. So we can provide physical therapy, occupational therapy and also speech therapy in the home setting. Uh, for those um, folks that are unable to get out and, and receive those mm -hmm. services elsewhere. Uh, so home health is a restorative um, nursing service. Our goal is to um, help, um, help the population uh, that needs the service regain um, to the maximum ability that they mm -hmm. can um, and then remain independent and in the community rather than having to um, um, go into a facility or have alternative um, living arrangements. Okay, so in a nutshell, it's basically a rehabilitation or rehab program at home if someone would you know break their arm or something and have to go to rehab they're strengthening themselves to get back on their feet so to speak that's correct it's okay. another option for that that patient population okay uh, one thing I noticed and we had talked earlier um, also what the social worker can help with advanced care planning that's correct what is an advanced care plan if you want to explain we do, um, we do have social work services, and our social workers can um, help, uh, help folks with advanced care planning, which would be um, looking at their um, power of attorney for health care if they mm -hmm. don't have that um, set up, uh, looking at uh, a living will, um, talking about um, what they'd like to see as um, they get older and, and uh, where they would like to see um, 
uh, their, how they would like to see their living arrangements handled, their <laughs> finances handled, their um, health care decisions handled moving forward as they age. Um, so making those decisions, maybe doing some advanced funeral planning, um, just taking a look at all of those um, issues um, that we all face as we get older mm -hmm. and um, making those decisions ahead of time so that they can be, be assured that their decisions are being carried through as they get older and maybe they're not mm -hmm. able to make those decisions anymore at some point. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, a while back I had to actually enlist in home health assistance when my dad had some health issues mm -hmm. and such. So I think it went, it went very smooth. And the question I have is how does one get in touch to look for home health service and then what's the timeline usually of the service or package or, or deal or accommodations that are available? Okay. Uh, for, if, if you need home health services or you think you might need home health services, you can contact um, the home health agency directly uh, and we can then um, take that referral and uh, um, uh, approach the physician. We, we are a physician ordered service, mm -hmm. so we do require a physician's order and oversight to provide those services. However, um, we can take that referral from um, the patient themselves, from a family member, or um, the physician office will sometimes call and order home health services. Um, home health services are then set up, a nurse goes out and she does an assessment of the needs of the, the person at the time, collaborates with the physician on what those needs are, and then we come up with a plan of care and set some goals in collaboration with the patient. We move through that um, plan of care and work towards those goals. Um, typically, um, the amount of time varies depending on each person and what their needs are, um, but we re-look at um, every case every 60 days and we decide if we need to continue on with home health services um, or if we need to discharge. And of course, anybody can be discharged at mm -hmm. any time when they've, when they've reached their goals. Okay. Does the home health plan enlist other agencies that may help with. And where I'm going with this is let's say I need home health services for a bit and I've broken my leg or I can't get around so I may need help with grocery shopping mm -hmm. or laundry or things like that. Does that come under that umbrella as well that you can help facilitate? Yeah, we, we are able to provide very um, minimum custodial care mm -hmm. is, is what you're referring okay. to, right? Uh, we do have home health aides that can come in and help with um, more of the, you know, bathing and dressing and okay. things of that nature. Uh, but we can um, refer uh, on to um, some additional services through, through other um, community agencies. Okay. Um, and there are a number of different agencies within the community that provide caregiver assistance with laundry and errands and shopping okay. and those sorts of, of things. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. With home health services, does insurance uh, plans pretty much cover services for that or is it out of the realm of what insurance covers? That's a great question. Um, Medicare does cover home health care 100% if it is um, ordered by the physician, if there is a skilled need and um, the patient um, is homebound mm -hmm. uh, where they, they cannot easily get out to um, um, attain those services elsewhere. Um, there is no copay um, at this time with Medicare. They do cover 100% as well as Medicaid. Okay. Um, other commercial insurances, um, it, it depends on the insurance plan. Uh, sometimes there is a um, copay, um, a deductible, um, and all of those um, plans, when we, when we get a referral, if we do have a commercial insurance plan, we evaluate that, those on a case-by-case -case basis and we'll um, bring those, uh, what those expected costs are going to be to the patient up front so they can decide if this is an option yep. that they want to go forward with. Okay. How much of a success rate have you seen with a program like this where, you know, it helps the people that makes them comfortable because, you know, like they always say, one always feels better when they sleep in their own bed mm -hmm. or in their own surroundings. Mm -hmm. What's the feedback you receive from a program like that? Well, I, I think generally people just really want to be in their own home. And if they can recover in their own home, um, they're just, they just feel better all the way around. They recover faster. Um, so we, we get a lot of positive feedback about the home health program. Um, it's very successful at keeping people out of the hospital, helping them to maintain independence. Um, and uh, I, I think our, our patients are very um, grateful um, for the ability to recover mm -hmm. in, in their own home um, with their loved ones sure. surrounding them and, and their, um, you know, the, the, just mm -hmm. their own surroundings. Excellent. 
Okay, now I'd like to move on to hospice mm -hmm. and that service. So could you describe you know, what hospice is? Absolutely. Um, hospice uh, is um, end-of-life care um, for anybody who has been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Uh, they have a life expectancy of um, six months or less if the disease runs its normal course, mm -hmm. and they are not seeking curative treatment any longer. They qualify for um, hospice um, benefit and hospice program. Um, hospice also can be provided um, in the patient's home, uh, wherever the patient calls home. So mm -hmm. it can be in, in the patient's home, in an assisted living, in a nursing home, um, or even in the hospital, we, we do hospice as well. Um, what we really focus on with hospice care is providing that quality of life at the end of life mm -hmm. and making sure that we're um, identifying with the patient and their loved ones um, what their goals are, what gives them quality of life, what, it, what, what gives their life meaning, and trying to help them to reach that um, and to um, come to a place where um, where they feel um, acceptance and, and, and that they've been able to um, um, have healing. And it may not be physical healing right. from their disease, but maybe it's emotional healing, spiritual healing, healing of relationships with loved ones um, and um, you know controlling their symptoms during that time and making sure that they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. What's the one of the primary differences in care provided or services required between, let's say, home health and then a hospice. Obviously, it's end of life has been defined with hospice, mm -hmm. but what are some of the differences in the services that are required in a hospice that maybe aren't in a home health situation? Good question. Um, we do provide the nursing services, obviously, um, in hospice as well. Um, we uh, have um, medication you know, management, symptom mm -hmm. management, um, so uh, nursing services are involved. We have um, social workers that work with uh, patients, not only um, on the advanced care planning, if they haven't done mm -hmm. that already, um, but just to um, work through some of those um, emotional issues, um, some of those um, issues that might come up that we know people are facing um, as they're approaching the end of their life. So helping them cope with um, what's happening with them, um, working with the families. Um, we have a, um, a chaplain um, on our hospice team mm -hmm. that can provide spiritual support for the patient and their family if they wish, um, or we can connect them with um, a spiritual advisor um, of their choosing, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the, the patient or the family wishes. Um, we can provide home health aid services to help with um, um, hygiene needs. Uh, we can have a homemaker go in and help them with some homemaking okay. needs, which is not available in the home health um, right. home health service. Um, and we do have volunteers, and we really um, rely on our volunteers. Uh, they're um, great people that just give their time, um, and they they do everything from helping us out with. Um, uh, administrative type things in the office mm -hmm. to going into patients homes and sitting with patients and and providing that comfort and um, company and companionship that some patients mm -hmm. really appreciate. I'm glad you brought up the volunteer staff mm -hmm. and their dedicated means because the nature of today's subject I mean, day after day after day I mean you see you deal with you know people passing on mm -hmm. and such and I still say it because I did work in healthcare from the administrative side, obviously, but to see the actual healthcare people in action and their dedication and devotion to healthcare it just still blows me away. You know, to be dedicated like that, mm -hmm. like you would—I don't know what the burnout rate is, if there is, but that's just a different um, caliber of people in my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially <clears throat> with hospice, that you know, our hospice team is is very. Um, caring, uh, they're very compassionate, and they um, they they become very um, intimate with the family sure. and the patient. Um, that's a very um, emotionally charged time of a person's life. Um, so it, it it can be very hard on our staff um, mm -hmm. as well, um, going through that process and and um, you know um, moving, um, getting past that death, and and mm -hmm. and then and going on and, and working with more you know other patients that are in the hospice program. So they. Are are a very um, special group of people, absolutely. Yes. Coming back to um, the quality of life and what people are looking for, when people go and want to go into a hospice program, what are the main things of their quality of life that they're looking for to maintain and you know to pass on to the next with? If you could elaborate on that. 
Well, what most of our patients are really uh, looking for when they are enrolling in hospice is uh, they're, they're looking for uh, one comfort. Um, they want to be um, as free of their symptoms from their disease um, as they can be. Um, but they are, they are looking to um, just have peace and th however they define that and everybody defines that differently mm -hmm. um, but they they just want to um, live out the remaining um, time that they have um, with their family around uh, with their friends um, whatever gives them meaning and everybody defines that differently sure. but we try to um, really uh, make that happen for them um, with whatever means that we can excellent excellent now you had mentioned, you know, hospice, it can be at home or it can be in another facility and mm -hmm. there's several facilities in the county, mm -hmm. you know, that can do that. Is, I guess, what defines, you know, where they really go for their hospice? Is it just a matter of the patient's choice or are there certain needs that, you know, it just really doesn't work out at home or mm -hmm. what defines that? It really is both. Uh, we really do want to honor uh, patient choice. Um, if, uh, if, if somebody can stay at home and they have the support to do that, meaning um, family, um, the support of hospice, they have to have a caregiver at home. Hospice is not um, intended to be in the patient home 24 okay. hours a day. Uh, so if they want to be at home, they, they need to have a caregiver or somebody who's going to be able to care for them um, when they are not able to care for themselves on a continual basis. So in order to stay at home, they need to be safe. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with them and with their families to uh, make sure that we can come up with a plan that's going to meet those needs. Um, there are times, though, that, that they can't, and, and whether that be because they don't have a family nearby or they don't have family that's maybe able to um, take care of their needs, maybe there's an elderly spouse who just is not physically capable sure. of meeting those end-of-life um, needs, um, then we, we need to explore other options, maybe assisted living or a skilled nursing facility. Um, so we explore those with the, uh, with the patient and the family, and uh, we, we make those moves to a different um, care setting when that becomes uh, necessary to do so. Okay. So one common thing, if I'm understanding you correctly, is just like with a home health plan, you almost have to do a risk, ass risk assessment and a plan for hospice as well, so that way you can get the best plan in place to maintain that quality of life. That's right. We uh, Up front, we really look at all of the elements and we try to um, foresee out uh, what some of the issues are that we might encounter and come up with, a, if you, if mm. per se, a plan B um, for the patient and their family. And we work in collaboration with them uh, to determine what those plans are going to be should we have to move to, um, to another plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, like we had talked about with home health, with hospice, financial obligations, um, insurance cover that 100% as well, same matrix. Right, Medicare, uh, for those who have Medicare coverage, um, hospice is covered 100%. Um, anything that is related to the patient's terminal illness is covered under the hospice benefit, which is really a great benefit for mm -hmm. those um, folks that enroll in hospice or have a terminal illness that they're no longer treating. So for instance, um, if there are any medications that are needed to help control pain um, or nausea or any symptoms that are related to the um, terminal disease itself, um, hospice pays for those medications and sometimes those medications can be quite costly so that is a benefit mm -hmm. for those patients. Any equipment that's needed if the patient needs oxygen or a hospital bed or if we need a walker or a wheelchair at some mm -hmm. point all of that equipment is covered under the hospice benefit as well and again Medicare covers that at 100 percent and, and as does um, Medicaid. Um, private insurances may work a little bit differently and again just like home care um, we look at each policy and we determine what the level of coverage is and then we work with the patient and the family and decide um, what the best course of action is at that point based on what their cost share is going to be. Okay and thank you for that. Now I'd like to move on to palliative care Yes. and if you could you know, what is palliative, palliative care all about, if you could define that for us. Okay. Uh, palliative care um, is, is uh, similar to hospice, although um, a patient does not have to be, um, have a, a, a terminal diagnosis with six months or less to live. They maybe have a life-limiting condition, um, something that's causing them um, a, a, a 
symptom uh, management issues, or maybe they're struggling and they're having some spiritual issues or emotional issues, uh, but it can be a chronic disease um, that they're struggling with. Um, palliative care services then can be ordered um, by a physician and um, the, the patient can receive support, um, supportive nursing, um, social work, uh, again, aid services, um, and we can help that patient to, one, get control of their disease and their symptoms and do some disease teaching, uh, but two, also work with them in defining um, quality of life. So palliative care, too, is about quality of life, mm -hmm. just as hospices, um, but it's really um, more of a... Uh, you know, before you get to the stage where you're, you're um, looking at a, a, a limited life expectancy. Mm -hmm. So um, we really want to help people focus on what gives them meaning in, in their life. Um, we focus on how they want to utilize the healthcare system. So we really want to be able to help folks um, not have to go into the emergency room, not have to continue to come back into the hospital to treat um, the symptoms of their disease. We want to teach them how to um, manage their disease, how to manage their symptoms, mm -hmm. how to um, stay in the setting that they're choosing, whether that be home or assisted living, um, and give them quality of life. Okay, so part of the palliative care, advanced care plan could include home health services. It could. Yes. You know, being referred to that to help manage that so that way, like you had said, they're not going to the emergency room or in the hospital all the time. That's correct. Absolutely. Okay. Is there a certain stage or, I think I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there a certain stage or an area where all of a sudden people get moved from palliative care or whatever to a hospice program? And mm -hmm. It's probably because it's when they're diagnosed terminally. Yeah would be my question, but is there any other factors that may come into that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we, we do have um, uh, patients who are in our palliative program uh, that do have a life-limiting illness and they're just not ready to um, uh, be done with treatment. They, mm -hmm. they are still receiving treatment. They want to continue to um, um, fight and, and, and keep going. Um, so uh, we honor that and we honor mm -hmm. those decisions. Uh, but at, at the point when a patient decides that they no longer want to receive any curative treatment, then we would have that discussion about them if that's at, at that point if they want to um, pursue um, hospice care. Okay. Um, or if uh, we have somebody in our palliative care services and um, they have a chronic disease that just continues to worsen and, mm -hmm. and they get to a point to now um, they really are looking at a, um, a limited life expectancy um, and there are no treatment options, we can then um, look at hospice care for them as well. Okay. It is nice to know at least there are some options available mm -hmm. for people to I mean, go out you know, to the next step through their life and you know, in peace. As you know, the chaplain you had mentioned, I had him on the show a while back on a mm -hmm. spirituality episode. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing he defined as well is uh, with that, your quality of life and you have your plan, he's seen it where people actually, when they're ready, they go peacefully. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the ultimate, you know, when that time does come. Mm -hmm. And we do see that as well uh, in, in our hospice program. And, and we've seen many instances where uh, people uh, really do um, seem to sometimes choose when that mm -hmm. time is and uh, who they want to be there and sometimes um, they're alone and, and they don't want anybody there and sometimes it's, you know, they wait until every last family member they have is yes. there. Yes. It, it, it's really um, amazing how um, it, it just seems almost too coincidental, uh, the, the, the timing of that, but mm -hmm. I, I would agree um, that spiritual uh, peace is, is huge in, in quality of life mm -hmm. and, and end of life. It's, it's a huge um, component of what we do. Definitely. Mm -hmm. The last service that you oversee or involve with I'd like to go to is called Lifeline. Right. And could you tell us what Lifeline is all about? Yes, Lifeline is a um, service. It's an emergency response uh, system. Um, and many people are familiar with it. It's a unit that is placed in the home and the, um, the patient or the uh, subscriber has a button that they wear around their neck or they can have a, a wrist um, <coughs> bracelet with a button. Um, and if they would need help, if they fall, if um, 
If there's anything happening where they feel they need to have emergency services, um, they can push that button and that, that gets um, transmitted to a call center that then will check on them um, over the f special phone sure. um, and um, find out if they need help. Um, so many, many people in our community are able to stay in their home and remain independent um, that otherwise would not. It would be a safety concern, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, with the help of the Lifeline services. We also have a um, auto alert button. Um, this is a relatively newer um, feature. Um, it's a um, just like the button that they wear around their neck, but it has a um, sensor in it that will sense a rapid um, change in position, so fall. Sure. And if the um, if the person that is wearing the button does not um, right themselves within 30 seconds it automatically calls um, emergency medical services. So um, if somebody falls and they're knocked unconscious, um, mm -hmm. they are obviously not going to be able to push their button. Um, this technology um, is able to um, automatically do that for them. I know on TV you see you know, some of the services that are being advertised now. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, they actually got to tie it into windows if they're broken or temperature, fire, and things like that go off. Is that something that's included with, or is it just basically... Lifeline is just push the button because you're in trouble, you're, you're don't feel good or something. Yep, the Lifeline service, um, <coughs> it's a Philips Lifeline through Philips and it is um, it, it is connected to the person. So okay. um, the person would have to push the button. Uh, we do have um, um, a another scenario where uh, the person has to um, check in and actually um, um, activate something on the unit at certain times of the day. Um, otherwise, the the um, unit or the call center will mm -hmm. contact them to find out if they're okay. So, um, so it can be set up in different ways, but it is just personally connected to the person and not necessarily their surroundings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And likewise with that, obviously there's a cost to have that and then insurance is. companies as well cover that or is that out of pocket? Typically, insurance companies um, do not cover the Lifeline services. Um, it is um, mostly a, a private pay um, um, expense. Uh, the Lifeline service at St. Nicholas Hospital has a $30 installation fee, and then it is $30 a month, um, which is a very reasonable um, cost um, for that peace of mind. So essentially a um, dollar a day um, to have that peace of mind that there's somebody at your fingertips that you, can, you mm -hmm. could call if you needed that. Um, and we do, um, uh, we do waive that installation fee um, quite often, um, just so we can get the units out to people and so they have that peace sure. of mind. Sure. And if you look at the big picture, I mean, $30 a month or a dollar a day is probably a lot cheaper than living in another facility or assisted living facility at what they charge. It certainly is. So, definitely. Uh, I know we have to wrap here pretty quick. So if somebody wanted to find out about a service, you know, home health, hospice, mm -hmm. palliative care, where would they contact you at? In the Sheboygan area, they can call uh, 457 uh, 5770, uh, area code 920. Again, that's 457 5770. That is the main um, number for home health and hospice. They will get the receptionist and they can um, just let her know what they need and we can we can take that information from them. Otherwise, um, they can certainly go on our webpage uh, for St. Nicholas Hospital and that is www.stnicholashospital.org. Okay. Tanya, I'd like to thank you for being on the show and talking about palliative care, home health, and hospice. I think this was a great episode. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, that concludes our show. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can contact the TV station from our website at www.wscsheboygan.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Dave Augustine for Quality of Life.